All too often, when people disappear among mysterious circumstances, they are never found. However, when they are found, sometimes they have an extraordinary story to tell. This is one of those. This disappearance occurred in September of 2011 in the Mount Shasta area, at a place called Fowler's Campground near the McLeod River in Northern California. A basic article on the disappearance appeared in the Mount Shasta News. The missing was a three and a half year old boy known as John Doe because of his age and his parents' desire for anonymity. The child and his parents were camping in the area of McLeod when the young boy suddenly vanished. The father was quoted as saying, he was here and within a second he was gone. The parents were quick to notify the authorities and within an hour around 100 rescue personnel from many agencies came together to search as the sun was setting. It was five hours into the search when a sheriff's deputy with a canine stumbled upon the boy not far from the campground from which he went missing. The boy was hiding within a bush when the deputy heard his cries for help. The sheriff's deputy quickly scooped him up and sprinted back to camp while carrying him and reunited the child with his parents. And at the time, this was the whole story. John Doe went missing and was found hours later in what was a massive success. John Doe was never questioned by authorities as there was no reason to and all media simply reported a successful rescue operation. Were it not for the young boy's grandma, we would not know many of the bizarre details of what happened to the boy during the time that he was gone. It was about three weeks after the disappearance when John Doe visited his grandma Kathy, whom he called Cappy. During the visit, John said to his grandma that he did not like the other grandma Cappy to which she responded that she didn't understand, as she was the only Grandma Cappy. The boy then detailed that when he got lost in the woods weeks ago, it was because the other Grandma Cappy appeared out of nowhere, grabbed him, and took him to a creepy place, and that the other Grandma was a robot. He further described that he was taken to a cave and there were old guns, purses, and bags covered in cobwebs and spiders and dirt. It seemed as if they had been there for a long time and that he only realized that this was not his real grandma when he noticed the way that light sparkled on her face. Somehow or other, this gave him the inference that she was a robot. John's grandma realized that this was a strange thing to say and asked him what he thought a robot was. His response was that it is something that's made of metal and has a remote control. John went on to say that there were other robots in the cave. They looked like people, but they did not move. They seemed frozen in position and had distorted faces. John said that this other grandma seemed nice until she examined his stomach and then tried to get him to defecate onto a piece of sticky paper, which the boy could not do. The next details that John described was being walked to a bush somewhere outside where the other fake grandma told him to hide and that he would be safe there. And that is the same location he was eventually found by the sheriff's deputy. The boy's real grandma called his parents thinking that they were letting him watch some strange television that was making his imagination run wild. The parents, however, confirmed that this was the same story the boy had told them when he was discovered. However, they did not know what to make of the bizarre tale, so they forbid John Doe's grandma from pressing him with questions regarding the incident. They wanted him to move on and hopefully forget what happened without such a crazy story getting out. John Doe's grandma was particularly disturbed by this story, though, 
because weeks before John went missing, she had been camping with a friend in the same area around McLeod. When she had an incident where she woke up face down in the dirt with a puncture wound in the back of her neck, the incident had a lasting effect on her, both physically and emotionally. Not knowing what to think of it at the time, she could not help but feel there was some connection between her incident and the disappearance of her grandson weeks later. So, what can we make of this story? I have heard it theorized that the puncture wound sounds like some sort of attempt at retrieving DNA from the grandma. Or could it be that she just had some allergic reaction to a bee sting? Some details of John Doe's story seem too curious to write off simply as a child's imagination. John Doe seeing dirty old guns and bags in the cave is particularly interesting. As oftentimes when hikers or hunters disappear, there are items that are never found, and they should be. Could those items have belonged to these missing people? The details of the so-called robots are also very strange, as we can only try to understand them through the mind of a very young child. Somehow, the way light sparkled on this other grandma's face gave him the impression that she was a robot and the description of other people who were frozen in place with their faces distorted is particularly disturbing. Are they other robots as John guessed? Or are they actually humans who had been paralyzed in some way? What was the sticky paper that the grandma placed in front of him? One has to wonder about this cave as well. If this child's story is true, Somewhere in the woods around Mount Shasta is a cave that may hold some answers. As is typical, this story leaves many lingering questions. The most important one being, is any of it real at all? Is this story too strange and too detailed to be something that came from the imagination of a three and a half year old child? Or is it just a wild fabrication from the fearful mind of a young boy who spent too many hours lost alone in the forest? We'll never know. Until next time, thanks for watching.